Now it's end of 2022 and I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about the equipment I use and what I like and also what equipment I'll probably purchase for next year and what I'll probably will sell. So year 2022 is the year that I spend my time with all these flagship cameras. They are all owned by me. Everything on this table is owned by me. It's not a loaner unit. I purchased with my own money in 2021 and 2022. So things like the A1 was in 2021, the Z9 was late 2021, and the R3 was November 2021, GFX was, I think, 2020. And the XH2S was 2022. But this is the year that I did more than about 130 photo shoots across all my weekends. Um, I shoot cosplay, portraiture, conceptual, did some events, did some videos. I did a little bit of everything. And I thought that it's a good time for me to round up this year on the equipment I use, what I like, what I dislike, and what I think is the equipment for me, and what I'll probably sell next year. So uh, across this table, you can see five different flagships. This is the A1, the R3, the GFX100, the XH2S, and the Z9. I do not have any personal bias to any system. I use whichever system fits the scenario best. And I want to share with you my thoughts on that. But before I talk about the camera itself, let me talk about other things a little bit first. So, I want to first talk about lighting. This is my most favorite light of the year, the Nunlight 60C. And why I like it? Very simple reason. Not for the RGB. Yes, the RGB is fantastic. But it's because it can go 1800K. It can make street light look blue. I mean, half, you know. You, it's really hard to make street light look blue. I mean, street lights are usually warm. This guy can make street light look blue because it can go 1800 Kelvin. And the rest, well, you can look at my review. Fantastic piece of light. Portable, usable. I really like it. This is the light I really love for 2022. Now, when it comes to lens that I like 2022, there's the GM 35mm. I think this is light, small, sharp, good, great. Can use on the Sony system, DJI system. Produce fantastic results. Doesn't create any sound when you autofocus. Sharp, end-to-end. -end. Only weakness, focus breathing. But that is not a problem if you're not wrecking your focus non-stop. So this is the lens I love for 2022. Even though, yes, you see tons of expensive lenses on the table here. GM, this is a GM50. Uh, this is a G110, GF110. This is a Sigma 40. This is, I think, 33. And then this is 50 1.8. I have many other lenses too, but this is my most favorite lens, the 35 1.4 GM. Now, there is one lens that I quite am interested this year and Tamron provided me. I, the, my lens is actually outside, I didn't bring it in. I got a box though, because I was going to review this. This is the Tamron 20-40. I think this is a fantastic piece of equipment. Super small, super light. I'm going to carry it next year for traveling. Because 20-40 to 40 is actually really good for traveling. In fact, that is my preferred range for traveling. Uh, unless I'm doing portraiture. 20 is extremely wide, allow me to do all my landscapes. 40 is good enough to do simple portraits, simple close-ups, uh, not too much distortion. So 20, 40 is what I like. It's such a small lens. I mean, it is, I think, the same size of... I think it's lighter and... Or is it, wait. I think same size as the GM35. I just don't have the lens here, it's outside. Now, when it comes to small likes, this year, I'll say as the Wii light was my most fun light. I have many of them because we like provided me to review uh, and I purchased quite a bit of it myself. I also use none likes, but why I like we like because the app is fast. Take a look at the review of S03. The app is fast, it is light, it is cheap, made of plastic, easy to carry around, hard to damage because you know you don't get scratched, you don't get dented, you know, you don't take care of it. It's, it's affordable light. And uh, you can see I stack one whole stack here. I have more, I have the K21s too, and I bring them out to shoot all my cyberpunk shoots. I love them. They are fast, responsive, good, nice. Then a camera I never reviewed, but I love it is the Instax 360 one inch version. This is a fantastic piece of vlogging equipment. I use it to sometimes take my behind the scenes because it is so easy to use, so effective to use, and the image quality is still good, even if I zoom it all the way. On the phone, it will look great. On the big screen, maybe not. But it still conveys what I want to eat to convey. It is very, very good, if you ask me. The Instax 360 1-inch. 
Now the lens that I don't own but I'm going to buy is 35 to 150 f2 to f2.8. I did a review before, Tamron provided me the copy. That is a phenomenal lens. But because last year I don't intend to travel and do portraiture, didn't really get it. Next year, I probably will do it and I will purchase it because 35 to 150 is a one lens for entire trip. It's a bit heavy, yes, but it's a one lens for an entire trip. So no changing required, be it in snow, be it in sun, rainy, can use it. Portraiture 35 to 150, fantastic lens. That is a lens I will purchase in 2023. Now let's go back and talk about the camera systems here. So Sony, Canon, GFX, Fuji, XH, X series, uh, Fuji, and then Z9. If I have to choose one camera to keep, to do all my photo shoots, I did hundreds of photo shoots in 2022. Um, if I only can choose one to keep so that I can do my photo shoots for 2023, the camera I'll keep will be the R3. And it's very simple because it's reliable, it's easy to use. In the field for portraiture, I don't worry about its autofocus, I don't worry about its performance, I don't worry about its IS. I don't worry about its image quality. It has very good dynamic range because it has the mechanical shutter. It does flash photography without any issues, shoot in any scenarios because it can shift between mechanical and electronic. A no worry system and it has a nice flip out screen. The only downside on this table is that it is the lowest megapixel. But as a portrait photographer, megapixel is not the highest on my list. Yes, I do enjoy using it. I cannot say I don't enjoy. That's why I own the GFX. But the R3 is my camera of choice. Had a cough just now. So, if I ignore the R3, I'll say as every camera here has pros and cons and I use it for various reasons. For the GFX, image quality, no comparison. The nicest image. If you have used a GFX system before, I tell you the biggest difference on this table is when you do recovery. Recovery on a GFX gives you the most latitude without introducing noise. You can probably leave like three plus stop and there's still no noise. The next camera that is very good in doing that is the R3. You can leave three stops and probably have very little noise. The Z9 and the A1, you leave three plus stops, you can see noise. Now, is the noise intrusive? No. Does it affect you? If you're looking at absolute photo quality, probably not. But as the guy who edits it, you feel irritated. I'll keep it there. So the GFX have the most megapixel, but also have the cleanest output to me. And this deserves the top image quality. And this is the reason why it's still with me after owning all the flagships. 50 megapixels, 45, 100. Do I care about megapixels that much? No, I care about the overall image quality and the GFX is just the highest. Now, this is the XH2S. Um, I always wanted to own an APS-C camera for various reasons, because it's light, it's portable, it's small. And uh, it's, it's not really just a small part of the camera, it's also the lens and everything. But the XH2S biggest problem to me was always the noise when you do shadow lifting. At two stops plus, nearly three, you will see quite a significant amount of noise. It doesn't affect you if you zoom out, but if you zoom in, you will see them. So. Uh, that's the downside to me. The autofocus to me is reliable uh, for portraiture at least. On par with, I feel, with the rest of the table here when it comes to portraiture. Though I would say it's the responsiveness, not the best. Uh, that being said, I will probably keep it because it's an APS-C camera and I have use for it and I do intend to review a little bit more on the X-Series because it is a good middle ground for many uh, aspiring photographers out there. Many photographers came up to me and asked me like which system do I introduce to them and stuff. The problem is that the rest of them, the good items in their system cost a lot of money and they are usually full frame and they cost a significant amount. Fuji, you can get cameras that are really affordable like the XS10. Um, the other brands, well you can get more affordable but they usually come with some sort of disadvantage. And when it comes to lens support, I do know that if you buy the Fuji system, you can use it for as long as you like. Yes, you will never be as good as a full frame in terms of the image quality on the sensor. It's a physics limitation, but the lens, you have options. And I think that's important. 
The next best will probably be going to the Sony system, but that's another debate for another day. Now the Z9 and the A1, I own both of these flagship and you always hear me complain. And because both of them suffer the same problem. When it comes to IAF and you're shooting less than half body, they will focus on objects that is not the eye. Be it the strand of hair, the bangs, the lashes. Now, some of you may be wondering why am I so particular about it? Because I shoot a lot of cosplay, I shoot a lot of Asian type of uh, portraiture, a lot of casuals and stuff. And Asian ladies and cosplays love to have bangs. They have long front hair like me now. I'm going to cut my hair soon. But yes, they have long front hair, long side bangs. And this interferes with autofocus every other day. So if you don't believe you go online and search a little bit, it's a trend to have nice bangs, nice sides, Asian girls and cosplay. So both these cameras suffer from the same problem. However, the way they overcome it is different. And this is where I do prefer the Z9. The first thing, the Z9 screen can flip around. That's important because you know you cannot trust IAF when you're shooting close. So you have to flip the screen. The Z9 allows you to do pin AF where it's a smaller AF point that you can shoot and focus on the eye. Just the same as the Fuji systems. And it works out really nicely. The Sony wise, you have to switch to single shot AF, then you switch to point, and then you have to zoom in because the point is not small enough. It still picks up the eye, the lashes, and the hair, not the iris. That's the problem. So you have to do focus in, pinpoint, and shoot. And then the, old, the other reason why I still think the Z9 is better is also the image stabilization of Z9 is better than the A1. If you have used both of the system before, you will know what I mean. At very low shutter point, or should I say, at very low shutter speed, the A1 for some reason have some sort of shake or some IS instability that I cannot pinpoint on. Like the 50mm GM, I can never get it sharp at 140 of a shutter. Like I shoot three shots, only one is good. I mean, everybody can do three shot, one is, one is good. But you know, the, the Z9 is two shot, one is good. I don't talk about the R3. The R3 is like crazy. If I do 140, it will never even be soft. That's the difference. As long as the model not shifting around. When it comes to IS ready, Canon number one, GFX 100 number two, then the rest. Uh, Sony is the last. So that's for IS. But that said, when it comes to enjoyment of the systems among five of them, I enjoy the GFX system the most because I love the lenses. Every single lens is usable there. The Canon need to flesh out their shorter primes. Still lacks a 35. I'm using the Sigma 40 here, a monster of a lens. I don't enjoy it. Very good quality, but I don't enjoy it. The Sony has the nicest lens. Huge range. Love it. 35GM, 50GM, fantastic. I recommend Sony because the GM lens is fantastic. Their non-GM lens is also great. The Nikon still needs to flesh out their lineup. Still not enough for me. Uh, I mean, sometimes I do want 1.4. I don't always need 1.4, but sometimes I do want 1.4 and uh, there's no way out for the Nikon system. The older lenses are just not as sharp, not sharp enough for me for 1.4 usage. If I go to stop down, then I should just use the modern Z 1.8s, which are pretty good. So that's it. That's it. The camera I use the least this year is the Z9 because it's heavy, it's bulky, and the lens selection not as much. I actually use the Sony surprisingly quite a lot, purely because uh, if I'm traveling, Sony is my de facto camera because it's so small. And when I need a 51.2, I do love the GM more than the RF 51.2. I do love my 35 GM. And when I shoot video, the Sony is a superior system. It's the reliability of AF contradicting to their portrait one. When it comes to shooting video, their AF is very reliable, more reliable than the Canon system. So to me, the Sony system is still a more desirable system than the Nikon system. And if I was to sell a system, I would probably sell the Nikon away. I will keep the Sony. But on my table here, reiterating my first point, the R3 is the system. I like best. The Canon R3 is just reliable in every single scenario for portraiture. Being bright daylight, being really low light, stability of AF, 
IAF when it's close up, uh, image stabilization, adapting third party lenses so that you can finish the range up, and a flippy screen. The R3 does it all. And it has good battery life. No worse than any of these cameras on the table here. In fact, yeah, no worse. So the R3 really is my camera of choice if I can only choose one. But luckily, I don't need to choose. Most likely, most likely, if I was to sell a camera, I would sell the Z9 away. Um, still thinking. Uh, next year, I'll probably review a lot lesser. Uh, I just need more time to do other things. So maybe I'll sell my Z9 away. But the rest, I'll probably keep it to review the equipment across the ranges, across the lenses, and across the systems. So something I will do next year. And really, that's about it. To round up my 2022, it was an exciting year. Using flagships across systems was fun, exciting. To me, using different cameras are like traveling. It's an experience of its own. And I do hope that 2023 excites me a little bit more. I'm really excited to look at the R5 II, the R1, and hopefully maybe, maybe, next generation of the A1. If A1 have a flippy screen, I rate it higher because now without the flippy screen and the need to do that funny funny thing to autofocus on the eye close up, it's a bit hard. The Z9 is a lot easier. Something to look out for. Um, that's really about it for this year. I do hope that 2023 will be a fantastic year for photography and uh, hopefully there'll be some new innovations that even I never think of that may appear, that may excite me and hopefully it's useful to improve our photography. And if you have any questions, do write down in the comments below. I like a good discussion. And we can see, uh, you can ask me anything actually, you can ask me across the systems. I'll probably help you to get some answers. That's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this short little video to close up 2022. And I'll see you again in 2023. Bye-bye.